The Alliance of American Football has been a dream come true to me, so much so we're going to do a weekly recap show right after this show, but it'll come out before this show, which will be confusing, but I digress. I love it. I can't get enough of it. This is probably the third best thing that has ever happened to me in my life. And guys, it got me thinking, what's your favorite spinoff of all time? Which is weird, because you you sent that we were going to do spinoff as a topic, so I assumed that we were doing spinoff because they recently announced that there would be a spinoff movie to the mega blockbuster hit Aquaman entitled The Trench, and that we were celebrating that announcement. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Is it going to have Willem Dafoe in a mask? Uh, it's not going to have anyone from the initial movie except the Trench Monsters, so um, it, it's pretty exciting times. I thought about this for a while, and I, I have two answers. So I, I, I kind of was hoping that one of you guys might go first, actually, because if one of you takes one of my answers, then I can jump back to the other one, and I'm specifically worried about Maya taking my answer. My answer is the AAF. I, I didn't think oh. any deeper. It's, it's all I've been thinking about recently, and I don't think that's one of your answers, considering I don't think you've watched a single game. So, I saw a gif on um, of Trent Richardson spiking the ball into the stands or something on Twitter, if that counts as watching a game. Yeah, he got fined for that because they have little chips in there. Ah. They don't have a lot of money. so <laughs> that, was, that was the only ball. That <laughs> there will be no season this year. Mark, what's yours then? Um, hmm. so I kind of went back and forth. Um, on a, I, I, I had the answer I wanted to say, yeah. which was the Colt Bear report. That, um, okay. And that was one of my two. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I want to say it because it's, it, it is a technically a spinoff. Um, it's some of the most brilliant satire that that's been on TV. It, it surpassed, I think the daily show, um, as, uh, as a comedic creation. Um, and I also think that, you know, Stephen Colbert is infinitely more talented than John Stewart and what they did week in and week out with keeping that character um, going and fresh and relevant uh, was really impressive. And that time slot has been in an abyss now since that show left. Yes. Yes. And that's what I wanted to say. But if I really thought back to the, the one I've spent the most time watching the one that I, I've consistently enjoyed the most, and also what I think is is really kind of the e- exemplar of a spinoff. A- as much as our mutual friend Chris Coleman was going to hate this, it, it's Frasier. I I I I love that show. Um, I think it, it it's it, it's exemplary in that it took a, a fairly minor character. Um, out of the element, built an entire show around a a completely different show that was unlike what they were in before. Um, And it was hilarious week in and week out. It was, it was a farce. It's watched some of the episodes um, where it's, it's screwball and it's characters bouncing in and out of a room and ping ponging off each other, like something out of, you know, seventies, British humor. Um, it was very literate. It, it could be heartfelt at times. Um, it was well acted, won a ton of awards, if those things mean anything to you. But I, at the end of the day, it's just that's a show I've watched more than The Colbert Report. And it's, you know, it's always on somewhere and you can always have it on and kind of dip in and, you know, enjoy it for 20 minutes and then go back on and do something. And uh, I don't care if that makes me sound elitist. I don't care if you all are going to make fun of me for it. It's the true answer. It's the answer I have to go with. That, that's what I think is is what a spinoff should be. So Whether I... we're talking about your Twitter feed, um, we have talk about your comments on this show, talk about anything to do with this show, or just anything for the entire time that I've known you, Everything that you said has been about you being elitist. So I wouldn't take this opportunity ah, right ah. now to bring that out against you. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit you while you're down. Then this is a remarkably on-brand selection for me. So I, I don't like that show. I don't. I think it's rewatchable in the least bit. But I can say that I appreciate the fact that they didn't just try to recreate the same show that it was spinning off of. Because that's what most spinoffs are. And that's why most of them fail. Because they end up being just a a less interesting version of a show you were already watching. So I, I admire the fact that they did something different. I, it, 
it leads me to beg the question, because I don't think you sit around and watch Frasier very often. So if you're just talking about the total lifetime of how much you've watched a show, is The Simpsons not a spinoff? And would that then be something you watched more than Frasier? Because it started as a small segment on the Tracy Allman show and then got its own show. Hmm. It, it's, it, it, it's a good point. I guess you could technically think of it as a spinoff. I guess the, the reason why I wouldn't consider it is that the Tracy Allman show was sketch comedy. It wasn't taking a character who was part of a larger ensemble and then removing them from that ensemble and creating a new environment for them. That, that's what I took a spinoff as. Whereas the you know, Tracy Allman was just sketches and then, you know, Simpsons were basically their own thing, but they just went from being a three minute sketch to being a half hour show. So am I so, to understand that you are not including mama's family as a possible contender on this list? I do not consider mama's family <laughs> for anything at all ever. So I, I went movie route and I, I didn't, I didn't go comic booky at all because, you know, like, I mean, I guess in theory you could think like, oh, sure, Logan's, I guess, is technically a spinoff of X-Men, but like, Old Man Logan was its own story independent of the movies, and these characters have all existed for whatever amount of time, and the the movie that I think is technically a spinoff that I re-watched the most, and you could also put my on my list of... I don't understand why people don't love this as much as I do. And I think I'm actually going to get Maya to agree with me on this is Rogue One from Star Wars, which, you know, that that's not part of the Skywalker saga. It's their first attempt to make a movie a little bit outside of that. It's taking a very small element of that story or, you know, something we basically hear about in a side conversation and showing us all those events. And I think that is in my top three Star Wars movies. I think it has the best space battle of all time. It has the best lightsaber sequence of all time. It has some of the best ground battles of all time. I really like most of the characters in it. Um, it, it, It's got some pacing problems, which are my biggest complaints in some of the middle chunk sections. But I think that is one of the most rewatchable Star Wars movies. It is, like I said, it it rotates. My my top three are pretty set, and those movies jump up and down in order based basically on what I've watched most recently. But I think that is as good as anything else that Star Wars has done. And and I really hope they aren't done with doing the Star Wars like spinoff one-off movies just because... Solo didn't do well at all because, man, they really knocked it out of the park with the first one and it made over a billion dollars. Like, it didn't make Aquaman money, but it still made over a billion dollars. So, you know, I, I just, I can't speak highly enough of that movie. I but, love that one. But is that a, a, a spinoff as opposed to filling the gap in an existing story? I, I consider it a spinoff because it's not part of their main storyline or anything. It's they just were like... We want to make some side movies that aren't connected to this ongoing saga, and this is the scenario we took, which was a scenario that is just mentioned. You know, they just, I mean, literally, it's just a couple lines saying they stole these plans, you know, in the in the opening scroll, and they made a whole movie out of that. None of those characters were ever mentioned in the initial Star Wars saga. None of the planets they visit were mentioned in the initial Star Wars saga. They created all of that on their own by just taking, hey, we know some type of event happened. So, yeah, I 100% think that's a spinoff. There are uh, not a lot of odes to, to geekdom here in my living room. Um you know, the rest of the house, there's comic books and that sort of thing. But the living room is is pretty clean of that sort of thing, except for two items. And they sit right in front of my TV, so I'm always watching them. And um, it's a Jin Erso um, and a uh, um, Captain uh, Andor Funko dolls that sit right in front of my TV. So uh, I totally agree with you, Luke, on that one. I love Rogue One. It is my favorite uh, Star Wars movie. It's not the best Star Wars movie. That's probably Empire Strikes Back, but it is my favorite. That's a good way to say it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably three then as far as my favorite movie, or as the best ones go, but it's it's probably my favorite to watch. Which are your three? So that one, Empire, obviously, and what's the third? Last Jedi. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's far superior to 
the, the prequels or to the force awakens so i can see why that would be yeah no yeah. i you know i in in all seriousness like i get i get that it wasn't what what people wanted but it was it was the direction i wanted to see the story go which was kind of in the unexpected i i'm not big on nostalgia and um i understand people that that wanted more of that they really didn't get it and um that made them unhappy but you know i think there's a lot of people that were also in my situation that wanted to see things going another way and and they did so it'll be interesting to see what they do with the the third one because you know will it be a mix of those two movies will it go back to the way abrams did the first one will it go another way it's i i have to say with how those first two movies played out this is the most fascinated i've ever been by a a third Star Wars movie because I really have no idea what's coming in this one. As long as we don't get another third of the movie devoted to Canto Bite, I'll it was be all right. Canto Bite's eleven minutes. Good is the well, it feels a hell of a lot longer than that. Yeah, I, I get it. There's lots of things people don't like in in certain movies and whatnot, but it, it's it's eleven minutes. It's about the same amount of screen time that L three has in Solo. So um, I think there's there's lots of comparables there as well. Yeah, you're right. They both both those movies suck. The only, pro- <laughs> only thing is, I just like one of them. <laughs> All right. So uh, speaking of sucking, uh, let's go around the room and tell how we can get into contact with you guys. Luke underscore Nitzel on Twitter. Mark underscore Nitzel two three. You sure about that? I'm I'm positive about that. I don't think you have an underscore. Oh, I do. Oh wow. I, I... When I put it together, I made sure to include an underscore just because I didn't have one last time when I should have. Nice. Yes. Me, I'm Maya Madrid, reminding you to sit and spin. And together, we are Kids Seriously Found. <laughs> kids Seriously, and we're out of here. See ya. All right. <laughs>